youngest daughter. <laughs> and we used to be part of Love Caffili Church uh, back when it started in 2016, I think. Um, and uh, we were here for three years, three or four years before God moved us on to the United States. And uh, we had a plan to be in New York for a few years, which most of you knew that was our plan. <laughs> and God had a different plan, <laughs> which is usually what happens. But um, we were there for six months and then Tyro got offered a job in Atlanta, which is where we wanted to live eventually because that's where most of his family are. And uh, within a whirlwind 24 hours, we uh, managed to pack up our apartment and we made the drive down to uh, Georgia um, in the middle of the 2020 pandemic, which was great fun. <laughs> but it's just a huge testament to how God does it without us really needing to think twice about it. Um, but we've been there uh, for two and a half years now. Um, we saw God miraculously provide for our home. It's our first time buying a house and it is a, the most beautiful house uh, in the most beautiful neighborhood. We've landed in a very pleasant place and I thank God just for that really. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, just to see how he's moved in our lives without us really doing very much other than following him. And uh, most of you know the things we've been through over the last few years, and really I wanted to take this opportunity to just thank you all, and um, yeah, just thank you all for your love and your prayers, and just the comfort that we felt from across the pond. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we uh, had our fourth child last year, July, and she was born with a genetic disorder and she passed away at three days old. And really, I just would love to share today some of the things that God has taught us through that. Um, <laughs> but, but mainly thank you. Thank you so much for loving us and we honestly and genuinely felt your love from, from all the way over here, and we knew that you guys were standing with us and praying with us. Um, but yeah, I'd love to just share with you what God has done, because death has a funny way of waking us up to life, yes. and that is exactly our testimony. Um, he's woken us up <laughs> to life and life in all of its fullness. Um, so what I would love to share with you today is how God has really taught me to love myself <laughs> and I want to encourage us all today to love ourselves and that might sound really simple and really strange coming from up front here where we're told to you know love God and love others and we'll come to that but my focus today is how do we love ourselves um, as Christians as people of faith and um, who have this call to love others so I'd love to know how many, sorry, I'm trying to open my phone because my notes are on there, but how many of us have ever been on a plane? <laughs> yeah, most, most people, not everyone, but when you go on a plane, um, before you get, get on the runway and, and uh, take off, uh, the cabin crew come out into the aisles and they do the, emergen the, the safety rules and what you do in case of an emergency. And uh, one of the things they say is if the cabin pressure were to change in the plane, oxygen masks are going to fall down. And there's one golden rule. <laughs> Does anybody know what the golden rule is? Put it on yourself before you put it on anyone else. And I always thought that was really strange to me because I thought, well, if my child is next to me and I know they can't put it on themselves, I'm naturally going to want to put theirs on first. <laughs> and then I'll sort myself out because I know I can do that. But actually, God has really spoken to me through this little analogy. And he said, no, you are far more useful to me if you put your mask on first and then you help the person next to you. So he, sh he kind of revealed this to me in a few ways. But one way was I had a dream. Some of you may have already heard this on my Instagram page. <laughs> but um, I had this dream that I was on a cliff edge um, and my children were at the top of the cliff with me. Um, they were messing about with a few of their friends, just oblivious to any danger. They were just, you know, running around and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, you're about to fall off that cliff. <laughs> and there's a ladder right here. We all need to get to the bottom. We all need to get down there to safety. So I'm trying to instruct them to, come on, let's go, let's go. But they weren't listening to me. <laughs> 
they were having a great time, they were just running around oblivious. And I was getting quite frustrated and I was a bit frantic and scared that these, my children <laughs> weren't going to get to safety and they were actually in harm's way. Um, and then I just had this idea, what if I start going down the ladder first? Hopefully they'll follow me down. And so in the dream, I started walking down the ladder and one by one, thankfully Mary first, our youngest, <laughs> She uh, started walking down the ladder following me um, and I was able to like help her, you know, get down safely. But it was all because I had gone down first and eventually we all got down to safety and everything was fine. Praise the Lord. Um, but God really spoke to me through this and how often we can look at the needs. Like Gareth was saying, there's so much need in the world right now. and We can see the needs all around us of the people around us and even our own needs. Like we need food on our table. We need money for the heating bill we need you know all of our needs are very real um, and can often be quite scary and we can feel frustrated when we're trying to you know control everything and um, and find a way of meeting all these needs but actually God is saying exactly what Gareth said yes. follow me yes. love me put me first in your life don't worry about anything else yes everything else will fall in line and that was such a huge you know lesson for me and a huge relief to me that I don't have to control everything else around me or fix everything else around me I just have to follow him um and this morning he, he reminded me of the scripture in Matthew 22 verse 39 it says it's, it's when somebody asks Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And the first command, the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mind, strength, <laughs> all of those things. Um, but the second uh, greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, yes, let's love our neighbors, let's be loving. But it's, the key there is as yourself. You cannot effectively love the person next to you if you do not first love yourself. Um, and how do we do that then as Christians? There's a lot of talk in the world about self-love right now and putting ourselves first and not, you know, I've got my boundaries. <laughs> Nobody can affect my joy. You know, I'm a bit self-focused right now in the world. And... I think the way that we look at it as Christians has to be different. Yeah. Yeah. So let me give you an example. For me, I love to sit on the sofa at the end of the day, put on Netflix, binge, you know, whatever show is on, nice bar of chocolate and a glass of wine. And to me and to the world, that would look like self-love, right? I'm putting myself first. I'm putting everything else to the side for now and I'm just focusing on me. And in and, of itself, that's, in and of itself, that's not bad. But that is the equivalent of attaching yourself up to a scuba tank of oxygen. <laughs> and eventually it's going to run out and you're going to be left gasping once it does. There's a better way for us as Christians. We have an unlimited supply of oxygen. <laughs> an unlimited supply of love and goodness from our Heavenly Father who is so so genuinely wants to give it to us. Yes. Um, it, in um, Proverbs, let me just get the reference. Proverbs verse 19, verse 8. It says, to acquire wisdom is to love yourself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. Yes. Very good. Very good. Read that again. Proverbs 19, verse 8 says, to acquire wisdom is to love yourself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. There's wisdom that only comes from salvation. There's wisdom that only comes through knowing who Jesus is. The Bible describes the wisdom of God as being the message of the cross. Yes, that's right. And... That is the only thing that's going to sustain us, and um, yes. that's the only thing that's going to sustain us. Um, good, 
yeah, so, sorry, I've lost, <laughs> I've kind of lost, but, um, I think when we go through things, we're quite quick to want to fix it, aren't we? <laughs> and I think if we've learned anything over the last year, it's not to run away from our problems, yeah. yes. but it's to seek God yeah. at the end of our problems. Yeah, that's right. yes. that's right. And the only way we can do that is if we come back to Matthew verse 22, the first and greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God above all else. And what Gareth said, you seek him first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be added to you. Yes. And that is, that's been our experience when we faced the death of our daughter Lila. Yes. We could have, walking through that whole experience, we had many opportunities to just look at the things that were happening and be so consumed by all of the news that we were getting and all the updates and all the things that they were saying we could and should do, all the decisions we had to make, we could have been so overwhelmed. And there were moments where we probably were. Um, but God was just so good in reminding us. And that's what I love about God, is he puts so many reminders through our days to just turn to him. Yeah. And just remember him. And like we look at the bread and wine here today, that's exactly what we do when we do this. It's just us remembering him. Yes. And I think so often we forget to remember him yes. in our everyday because we're so distracted by everything else. You know, with that, the image of the kids on the cliff being so distracted by the need and what was going on. And it's so simple. It is so simple. Yes. We just have to focus on him. Yes. And I'm, I'm thinking of it now and it sounds so simple and I'm... And I'm like, I'm struggling to make it practical, I think, but and that's what I want. I really want to make it practical, but it really is just that simple. It's putting him first. But one of the ways that we do that and the way that God has done that in us is with this. And it's so important that we know his word and that we really stand on it when we face troubles and when we go through hardships, because this is, this is our life source. <laughs> If you want to know Jesus, read this. Yes. But don't just read it for what it is. It's a book of laws. Yes. <laughs> it's a book of do this and don't do that. But with Jesus at the centre, yes. it's life. And it's, yes. it is a life source to us. Yes. And that's re really my encouragement today is read this. Be in this. Let, sorry, let me share one more scripture with you. James 1 verse 23, it says, but don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says, otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Yes. We have been so blessed, <laughs> so, so blessed this year because we've put, we've really dug into <laughs> the word. And when I say that death has a funny way of waking you up, we were woken up to this reality yes. that we thought we were living in <laughs> before. And we were. But there's so much more, and I think if we think that we were saved on day one and that's it, we're missing so much more. Yes, yes. There is a daily salvation that we walk out, and it's only through putting in first and remembering the gospel, remembering the good news of what Jesus has done for us. And it's not, it's not always easy to remember that every day when you're facing hard things. But that is what he's asking us to do. And it's that maybe that's how I put it practically. That is it. Every day is we remember the good news of Jesus. We remember what he did for us. And I think that's why it's felt so real for us. Is because when somebody dies, you have to really stand on your belief of eternal life. <laughs> and in order to 
believe that there is eternal life, you have to first believe that Jesus made a way for that to be possible. And that's like, that's freedom, <laughs> is to really believe that that is what has happened, that he, we sing, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. How many of us are genuinely happy <laughs> about what God has done for us? Because we truly understand what he's done for us. And we truly, yeah. I don't think any of us will ever understand fully what he did for, for us and in us. But that is why he calls us to go deeper and deeper into his word, is to eventually we will come to that full understanding of knowing what he's done for us. And as we do, we will grow from strength to strength. And that is God's desire for us. It's not that we go through seasons like this of going up and down and we face hard things and then we've got to struggle to get up again. That's not God's desire for us. He promises in his word that I can't remember where it is right now, but he, he promises in there that we can be like trees planted by living water that will bear fruit in every single season and that we will prosper in everything that we do. That is a promise that he has for us and that I want to live in. <laughs> I think you guys do too. But the only way to do that is to be planted rooted in him in his word to really dig deep and draw from our life source it's not an oxygen tank that's going to run out one day it is an eternal life source that we have access to and I just really want to encourage you guys as I encourage myself every day because every day we need reminding to plant ourselves in his word and take every thought captive Every thought that comes against the truth that is written in here, take it captive and don't let it take root in you. The ones that you want to take root are the words that are written in here and the things that God says about you and about us as a people. We want those things to take root, but they won't just take root themselves. We've got to meditate on God's word and think about it and really take those thoughts captive as well and let them sink in until they become a reality in our lives. Yes. And that's what God is doing in us. And that's what I see God doing here in all of you in Love Cofili as well. And so this isn't me saying, do this, do this. This is me encouraging you in what you're already doing. Keep going. Yes. Don't give up. I know it can feel hard to always choose <laughs> the thing that is opposite to the way that the world works. But that is the way to salvation, that is the road to perfection, that is the road to success that we are all on. So that's my encouragement. I hope it's encouraged you. Tyro, I think... Oh.